My name is Anton. Um, first of all, thanks for having me here. I'm not from Code-centric, but I'm from Germany. And uh, first, I really want to say thank you to Code-centric for organizing Code stuff here. It's really amazing. Um, we have about 25 minutes now because of some technical problems, but um, I think this will be sufficient to, to play. Um, so this is just short information about myself. Um, I work in Berlin in Germany, um, mainly with Java and um, RCP projects during the day. And um, Play for Framework is kind of um, my hobby. And um, I'm working on kind of personal projects um, with Play Framework. So if I make any mistakes, so it's 11 o'clock, and I'm now in my daytime, so I'm now in this rich client development, so bear with me, and um, there's Twitter and whatever. Um, I spoke about, um, I would say, 10 days, maybe. Hi. Um, 10 days or two weeks ago, um, I was in Warsaw and um, spoke at one conference, and um, it was again about a play framework and it was kind of a workshop um, going to three hours and then um, we created some nice stuff. And um, this slide is actually from this workshop, so th this was the whole idea of the workshop, to, to create some nice web application. And um, because this is what uh, play framework is actually all about. And um, we, we really did have fun uh, with all the guys and girls that were there and visited the workshop and it was really interesting but um, so I explained the guys uh, and girls and, uh, things about so things that first of all all you know I guess so models, views, controllers so we are in this enterprise world and you, you have definitely heard of all these uh, things and then um, then uh, stuff come up like uh, actions and roots. These are really play specific. So actions are things like um, the methods that you hear write to handle your requests. And then uh, in your routes, you define actually how your HTTP requests uh, look like. And then you combine all these uh, five components and you have this um, nice uh, base that uh, you can uh, write your web applications. And then um, I went further on and we discussed stuff like uh, database connections. It was mainly about um, SQL databases, but uh, with Play you can also work with NoSQL and stuff like this. Then we went really further on, defined our REST API and um, stuff like this. We even called some web services and we worked with Future so, uh, that we mapped. So there was really some functional programming and um, we even got to the point of introducing web charts. This is this new cool stuff that uh, you have all this um, nice, let's say JavaScript libraries or CSS libraries or whatever uh, packed into JAR so you as Java developers can use them. And this was really interesting uh, there in Warsaw, and it, it really was fun, but then, um, but then the end of the workshop came, and uh, people started asking questions. You know, this is the really bad, bad part. And um, then people were really satisfied with, uh, with Play Framework, and they, they really tried, and they succeeded building some um, web application that was uh, really also um, capable of uh, being deployed to production, but um, then they, s some questions arise like, okay, do you actually know X? And uh, what do you think it's, is, is X better than y, uh, than y, or is it better than C, and stuff like this? And then most of the time X was um, replaced with um, Spring Crow because everybody is like, okay, I can do this in Spring Crow in, I don't know, two rows and then I have, uh, so I type two commands and then I have all my models and then I have all my REST, uh, my whole REST API and stuff like this. And um, so there was really this discussion about um, Spring is there for a while, why should we need another uh, web framework and stuff like this. And, this, this really uh, got me into thinking because um, the stuff that I was that I prepared actually I, I 
wanted to uh, to talk about this also here at Rolling Serbia, but um, then it really got me into thinking, and then um, I just made a decision that uh, I'm really not going to talk about a play framework. So uh, you can leave now if you want, but um, um, it's actually I, I'm not going to talk about a play framework as if it's yet another web framework, and because to um, I really want to show you what, what, what are the good part of it and where uh, does it really have a disadvantage. So then I really started um, to think, okay, what is actually um, this advantage that uh, I want to show? And uh, it, it, it's got me to, to these three letters, the USP. Anybody, anybody of you uh, that studied something business or marketing related or something like this? Nobody, right? So I, I studied in, um, in Berlin at a technical university. And in, uh, back then, um, we had this option. So I studied computer science, but we had this option to, to choose some topic that is not related to computer science. And I chose something related to business and marketing and stuff like this because it, it was kind of fun, and it, you, you see all, um, also other people, not, not only IT guys and girls. And uh, this is actually the, the only thing that I remember from the whole semester, so only this one word. And USP stands for Unique Selling Proposition. So if you're really into business and marketing, you really need to look for this kind of thing to, um, to, uh, to um, tell your customers what is your unique selling proposition and why should they buy your product or why should they use your service and stuff like this. And then this lead me, uh, led me to, to other uh, thoughts like um, what, is really, um, what is really selling right now in the whole enterprise or uh, whatever <laughs> IT world uh, overall. And then I started thinking about Cloud, you know the cloud. It's it's really a big word right now. So I'm pretty sure everybody of you have heard about the cloud. And if you ask people around on the streets, they also have heard about the cloud and how you store all your data and how everybody can see your data because it is in the cloud. And then um, it was this really a nice example. So not from Heroku or anything, but I, I really like the service that they provide. And so they are one of these um, guys that really uh, give you the possibility to um, kind of to concentrate on, on your application and not on the infrastructure that um, you're going to take care of. So this is one point. So you, you kind of you can think about the cloud as kind of the deployment for our web application. And then um, when we when we talk about the cloud, and let's pretend it's somewhere, I don't know, somewhere, uh, you can imagine it's on the top, but you can also imagine it's somehow on the bottom, because uh, in this case, Heroku is providing you the whole infrastructure, so it can lay also on, at the bottom. And then the next layer that you have on top of it would be something that is related to distributing your data, or, or even distributing your system, or uh, distributing your application. And then Akka came to my mind because Akka is this. Anybody heard of Akka? Yeah, cool. Um, so for for the rest of you, um, Akka is this um, kind of um, there. There was about I would say 30, 40 years ago this um, idea in the computer science slash mathematician uh, slash uh, theory world that. Um, there's this actor model and you can define actors. So basically pieces of code that handle different messages and they can work um, and they can interact on um, uh, basically standalone and then they can also communicate uh, between each other. So ACA provides you this mechanism to kind of to, um, to create this whole infrastructure of actors and then you can really rely on messaging and you don't need to uh, take care um, of stuff like threads or synchronizing or uh, deadlocks and, and stuff like this and it's really performant. So the next level would be also some to, to um, to abstract uh, this a little bit, then you, you would go maybe next um, to, to some kind of front end or something like this. And then 
everybody is really into HTML5 nowadays. It's, it's not really about all these um, attributes that you have in, in uh, also all these new attributes in your HTML text. It's really stuff like, um, I would say, um, local storage, web workers, uh, web sockets and stuff like this. So this is really what um, HTML5 brought us. And then if we are already talking about HTML and frontend and stuff like this, it is really kind of you need a combination of both, um, between frontend and backend maybe. And then there are really nice frameworks in this area or even if you want to concentrate only on the, um, on the frontend. And in, in this case, the kind of new kit on the block, although it's really not new right now, so it's, it's actually AngularJS. Anybody heard of it? Yeah, oh, cool. So AngularJS is, I mean, you, you learn about a lot about AngularJS by some guys that are giving workshop here. Um, but, um, so, I, I, I came up with all these technologies or all these ideas and then I um, started to think, you know, I have here some unique technologies or some really interesting technologies that um, you can somehow combine and you, you know all these bartenders at the bar, so they have all this cool stuff like, I you know, vodka and other cool stuff. And then combine them in, in some bottle or glass or mixer. And my idea was actually to, to get all this stuff here and then combine it into kind of um, into kind of a mixture, and this mixture being also served by the play framework. So um, this is what actually where we go back to the play framework world. And um, so the idea is now um, so in, in the keynote we had no slides from Peter and then Alex showed us some slides and I will bring this to the new level and also show you some live coding and so we are going to code now. Or this I'm going to code and you can comment and recommend and also make fun of me and yeah, so let's do it. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is actually, it's, it's really easy. So it's, uh, I, I created a new play framework project. It's, it, it was really easy. It, you, you see all, uh, this line, activate a new map marker, play Java. So this, um, sorry. So this, this line um, creates actually the whole, um, the whole play framework application, and um, it's it's actually one line that you uh, type, and then you have um, your application. And um, what I did here is um, I'm using IntelliJ here, and I just uh, imported a project, so nothing special here. Um, you, you see all these. Um, Apps, uh, assets, controllers, and stuff like this. It's all created by the Play Framework, so it's kind of default project directory for you. And um, what we're going to do now is um, just to uh, to extend uh, this application. So it's it's really straightforward. Um, going to switch for a second. Because I really want to see what I'm writing, so it's not completely bullshit. Um, so you, you can really uh, create your models, views, controllers, and stuff like this, and uh, it's it's really pretty straightforward. I will, I'm sure how it works. So um, what we want to do is in this application, we want to combine all these um, unique technologies that I. Um, um, that I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. So um, first of all, we can go, so you can mentally go to this um, routes that I spoke of, and um, 
you can see this uh, routes file. It's, it, it's really um, where you define all your HTTP requests, and it's kind of you define patterns for your requests. So you have this get HTTP verb, and then the URL that this request is going to land, and then you have this um, actions. So these actions are actually what they uh, said the methods that are handling your requests. So you can also define stuff like. So now we defined a uh, request that is going to go to this uh, slash WS URL and then uh, it's going to be handled by um, our WS method in the applications class. So it's, it's really, now we have one request here. And um, we can also create this method here. So you see this is what a controller looks like in, in the play framework world. It's, it's really a class that is extending uh, the play controller class. And you have different methods that are, as I said, handling all the requests. So in, in this case, uh, we are returning only a to-do here for the web service, but um, what we can do is actually integrate ACA this tool that allows us to, um, to create actors and then use each and every actor to handle our requests. So it means we are really um, we are really asynchronous and for every request that, um, that we get, we uh, create another actor that is handling um, all the requests and then we can really delegate it to either another actor or we can return from this actor, but this whole thing is, happen, um, is happening as asynchronously and so you don't really need to block. And in this case, um, we can create um, So I'm just going to copy it from here so that, uh, because I see we really don't have much time, so it's, um, this is what, this is what the whole thing is going to look like. So you, you say we have this um, WS method and then instead of returning some Result that is about to be HTTP result, we are actually returning some WebSocket. So we want in our application to handle WebSocket connections. And in this case, we are going to work with, uh, with strings, but you can also um, define JSON nodes and you can also define byte arrays and so pretty much everything you want. And then uh, Play offers us some nice possibility to create all these actors. It's, it's really quite straightforward to create it. You can also use Java 8 and stuff like this so you don't have all these ugly methods here. But um, in this case, what we actually do is just um, make some instance of, uh, of this WebSocket actor class that we are going to create right now. And And um, Aqua was actually built from uh, this company called Hivesafe. So Hivesafe is this really huge company that is staying behind um, Scala and uh, other type safe stuff. And um, so the whole Aqua thing was actually built with kind of Scala in mind because Scala is also the real Scala was the language itself. But, um, they also defined some um, Java API. It's, I would say it's really not, maybe not that uh, advanced as the, um, as the uh, Scala API, but in, in this case, it's, it's really pretty straightforward and um, it's sufficient for us. So what, what you do is actually, you, you extend some untyped actor. And um, the only thing that an actor does is actually he receives messages. 
and um, these messages can be in any form. It, they, they can be strings or they can be uh, JSON or, or something. The, the only idea is that these messages is kind of serializable and um, then the actor um, should decide on, on its own if he is able to handle this message then he can do something with this message, and if not, then he can just um, say, okay, I'm not able to do this, or I can delegate it to somebody else that is able to do this. And um, in this case, we are um, just going to check. So um, this is the honor receive method that we had a minute ago. Um, so first we uh, we we'll just um, test that um, we are not the one that um, is actually um, sending this message because uh, of the uh, how we build our application. But then it's it's really uh, no matter if you program with the Java API or with the Scala API, you have. Um, this isn't checking. So in this case, we are just checking, okay, is this message of type string because we are responsible for handling strings? And if this is the case, then we are uh, just going to tell all other guys that um, we receive this message. And this is what we do here with this um, nice uh, Java 8 syntax. So this is really, um, what you have to take off from this slide is now, um, get the idea that you, you always receive a message when you uh, have some actor and you really need to decide what to do with this message. In this case, you, you do it with if, instance of, and stuff like this in, uh, in Java, but in the Scala world you do it uh, in the same way with uh, pattern matching. So it's, it's really the same, uh, you're using maybe different language constructs, but this is the only thing that you kind of really need to remember from this slide. So you, you, you see your message and then decide what you're going to do with this message. So um, so in this case now we have some um, actor here that um, is going to handle um, all the stuff. And now we um, created this actor here in, um, in our web service request. So now we're kind of able to um, start our application and everybody that um, wants to create some um, WebSocket connection to us can really do it when he points his um, client to slash WS URL. So um, next step would be also to, so we were in this kind of um, controller world and then next step would be to, to go in this um, and this uh, views and um, the whole UI thing. So um, what I have prepared here, it's, um, so this is really, um, you can think of the play framework views as um, kind of combination of um, static parts and dynamic parts because, um, Play framework views are actually based on templates. So we have this uh, default zero. This is uh, uh, actually a templating engine that is behind it. But um, it's kind of extracted out of the play framework uh, code so you, with the idea that you can interchange them. So you can think of really of real HTML that you see here. So HTML and title and so all the things that you created when you were five years old. And then you see all this um, here, add, add stuff like this. So this is really the uh, dynamic part of the whole template. So the moment that uh, play framework sees some ads and then stuff like this is actually interpreted as the dynamic part. And in this case, we are just saying, okay, um, apart from all this bootstrap and stuff like this, um, we we also want to integrate some um, application .js file, and this is actually the dynamic part because we can also create this application .js in in other location and place actually going to evaluate 
all this um, thing that is written in there, and then it's going to create some um, it's going to create some static code out of it. So what we have here is actually a WebSocket demo, I enhanced it just with some um, nice formulas and um, bootstrap and stuff like this, for example, just uh, um, CSS classes. So there is also a bit of Angular here. It's, I'm going to talk a bit later about it. So you, what you really need to remember here is you define play framework um, views in, in a combination of Scala and HTML mixtures, and this is what uh, this templating engine is actually doing for you. So the um, so the next part is actually to um, to sh show this to the um, to the client, and this is what we do in this line here. So. Yeah, um, in this sense, you, you really see it's, it's just another um, action, so just another method that we're um, implementing and um, therefore handling some of our requests. In this case, what we do is actually okay, we say um, just return the HTTP as state of 200, it's okay, and then also render this template. And in this rendering, is actually what happens is that all these dynamic parts uh, are generated and turned into uh, static parts, and then um, you have this um, beautiful view that is displayed to the client. Um, Fifteen. Okay, thank you. So, now we want to kind of to point our client to uh, to the method that we just created, so it would be WS client. So the moment that um, the moment that our client kind of uh, opens the browser, because let, let's assume that if if you make a get request at this base URL, then most probably you are in a browser, and this means we are handling it by just showing him this beautiful page that's created. Okay. Okay, now the next thing is actually, um, I'll, sh I'll show this one again. So we're going to do some JavaScript and I'm really bad at this, so you can really fix it. But it's it's really less than 80 uh, lines of code, so it, it will do it, I hope. And this is just a short excursion into AngularJS. Uh, as I said, there are two guys who are going to give a great workshop um, tomorrow, so please go to this workshop because you're not going to learn anything from this here now. But um, these are the three points that you kind of need to remember for uh, AngularJS. So, AngularJS gives you the option to, to have this nice two-way data binding. It, it means every time I have some model and every time I have some view, I don't need to write boilerplate code to, um, to synchronize them. So AngularJS does actually the whole synchronizing stuff for me. So every time my model changes, I automatically see the changes in the UI and vice versa. And the second part, What's interesting about Angular is actually just directives. Directives you can think of like um, enhanced HTML. So you can create your own HTML tags. And uh, so it, it, it's not more a title and then you can close it with slash title. It's, for example, leaflet or something like this. And um, the one thing that I, I don't know if this is a, I would say it's a strong part of Angular, but it's it's really useful for, for our piece right now. Angular gives you really a possibility to talk about, um, to talk with your backend because it really has um, some nice API that you can um, make use of. So um, then um, now we're going to create some. Um, now we're 
um, to create some um, JavaScript application and um, I'll just So this is how fast I write it. Um, what you do in Angular is actually you, you create some model. This is the very first row at the top. So in this case, we, we created some model with a name marker. And then um, in these brackets, you have all the dependencies. In this case, we are going to show something on a um, on a JavaScript uh, kind of world map, and uh, there is this nice directive for it. Um, second thing that um, you can do with Angular is to, to um, create kind of services or factories, and you, you create it with um, all this code that is written there. So um, what we do here is actually um, we are creating some requests here, as you see this line here, um, at slash WS, and we are using this um, idea that we have um, WebSockets in HTML5, so we actually, uh, in our front end, we uh, connect to our backend in this case, um, and to retrieve some WebSocket, and then if we receive some messages, we collect all the messages in this, um, messages array, and we can also provide some function to send messages. And all the data binding is actually handled in controllers, I would say it's uh, uh, in this uh, AngularJS um, world. So we also create some um, Angular controller and um, what is really important in the Angular world, uh, as far as I understand it, is the scope thing, because it actually defines the scope where all your uh, variables and all your objects live, and then this scope is actually the um, kind of part that uh, is responsible for this two-way data binding. Okay. Okay, so le let's do it the following way, because this really takes uh, much time. So um, you can now do the following. Now close your eyes and pretend that this is working. And um, <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to talk about something else. So um, I know you are really fascinated by this demo. So you, you definitely want to work further on the play framework, and this is how you can do it. Um, you can also read. Really Okay, this is serious now. Uh, you, you can really go to playframework.com. So everything is open source. It's, um, they, they have a GitHub repository you can contribute to. Um, I, I really recommend the website because if you want to really start doing something with playframework, I would not suggest to buy a book right now, maybe later if you want to uh, see some advanced stuff, but the website is really well documented and uh, it's, I, I would say it's really the best starting point, uh, especially if, if it's the first time that um, you are working with the play anymore. Um, further on, I'm going to um, commit all this um, to GitHub, but when I'm at the hotel, because then we have internet, and um, then you can really work on this demo project. You can also, um, if you really feel advanced, and you can really, and you really see, okay, um, I'm, I'm getting re, uh, uh, really uh, good at play framework, then you can also start, uh, I don't know, translating the documentation or stuff like this, so it's, it, it really can also help the community. And, um, okay, now let's see. So it's almost done. This is great. Oh, it's even more drink. Okay, then let's put in the survey now.
So how was your day? I, I mean, you can also, I don't know, kind of um, collect some money and then you can help me uh, to buy my premium account for Europe and then it's, it, it really depends on you, so it's nothing that I can do. Okay, so now, very quick, uh, really two more minutes. So it's... <laughs> and um, so this is online now. And there is a really huge problem with Heroku, and this is because you did not pay money for it. Um, the problem is, once you uh, open this website, it's creating a web socket connection, and Heroku is really picky about this, and they give us really one minute to, uh, to hold this connection open, otherwise you have to create some things or stuff like this. So what, what you now can do is actually, um, Wait a second. So it's actually this social experiment that we're going to do now. It's I, I would ask anybody if you have class internet, so maybe one guy only. Um, just open this website, and I really want to try that everybody of you puts his username here and let it use the number. We can eight hours for this, and make it so that this marble that is going to appear there points at Novisat. So you, you can copy this coding server.hiroku.com and then um, just, just to do it if you have um, some iPhone. So I can do it for me. I, this is my name here and I don't know, 50. But, but don't Google it. I mean, it's, I have only one minute here, so it's... Okay, so... And Scholle is there, and, and Scholle again. Who is this guy, actually? <laughs> so this is me and Scholle. I, I mean, uh, are you actually from Serbia? <laughs> okay. Cool. I, I mean, I mean, look at this. It's, it's, it's a little in Sahara somewhere, so it's... But that doesn't matter because you, you're the only one who has premium connection to the Serbian provider here, so congratulations. Um, so you're going to get this book because you're the closest to Serbia. Um, you can do it the following way, so 
ju ju just the short demo. So you, you specified all your uh, all your things in this um, in this roots file. Oh, if you see it, so you can do stuff like, um, for example, here. Let's say you have some API and you want to have um, the person that is under the ID one. So you specify something like this, and then in your controllers methods, you um, you have get person ID. Let's say it's I don't know. You you store it with with longs. So th this syntax is actually the Scala syntax. We have the a variable name and then you have the type of the variable. But this is one way to specify. So in this case, if if your client goes to person slash one, he's going to get the information about uh, person with ID one in your database. This is one way. You can also um, I know if you have some post request, you can also define it and. Um, so you can practically use all the HTTP verbs there, so you can have some post requests and maybe you want to have some JSON data that is, um, that is sent. Let's say you want to create some person. So you have post or put, we, we can discuss this in the afternoon. But um, let's say you have post and then you can do stuff like, um, I don't know, you, you have here, um, so from every controller you can, um, you can actually get the request that is coming, and then let's say the body and uh, as JSON. Can you see it? So, for example, if somebody sends you JSON, let's say they want to post something. So, it's it's really either it's some get parameter that we have in the URL, or it's, it's something that we have in the request body. So, yeah. Other questions? Okay, uh, so, so you had the last question, it was the only question that was player related, and uh, you get this book here. To draw it, so I can see you are really something to draw it. Okay, then, uh, so I have five minutes, but yeah. Okay, um, yeah, then uh, let's go through it and then take it.